is not dependent on the sign to say there's a God. It's dependent on His Word. In other words, I have reconciled it in my mind if I never, ever see another miracle in my entire life from now on, and I know that'll never happen, feel another goosebump, I will still believe it because that is my evidence and not the manifestation. Hello again and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bagg. We're going to carry on today with this exciting subject, authentic faith. Now, faith is God's very foundational system. He says, without faith it's impossible to please God. Remember, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. And that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, and the just shall live by faith. Just in those few statements, you can see how important faith is. Now, the enemy's a counterfeit. He's going to try and get us lost in different directions, and he'll use all kinds of lies and the fake to try and distract us. But the good news is, the Word of God is still yes and amen. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if we study out from the Word of God what faith is, that authentic faith will work in your life. Enjoy this. I'll see you later. So when God gives you a promise, you may not see it in your life yet, but that doesn't mean it's not yours. If He said, by Jesus' stripes, you have been healed, your proof is not your body. Your proof is the document. Now, the devil will try and convince you and talk you out of that document and get us to focus on our bodies. But faith is not dependent on the sign to say there's a God. It's dependent on His Word. In other words, I have reconciled it in my mind if I never, ever see another miracle in my entire life from now on, and I know that'll never happen, but I've made peace in my mind that if I never ever feel another goosebump, never see another miracle, something never ever happens again to prove the Word of God is yes and amen, I will still believe it because that is my evidence and not the manifestation. Can you see that? Now, with that kind of lifestyle, you will see a lot of manifestations. But the day your mind moves from the Word onto the expectation of manifestations to give you confidence in the presence of God, then it's very easy for the enemy to work contrary to that and cause things to happen. And he turns around and says, oh, now where is your God? Don't ever ask me, where is my God? Because my God is not in the wind and the waves and the sound. He's in that small, still voice. He's in the Word. This, to me, is more important than anything else that I've ever had from God. And you say amen to that. Amen. Say this. Faith is the evidence, even though I don't see it. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13 says, Since we have the same spirit of faith. Everybody say spirit. This is an attitude. This is something that's within you. This is faith, people. According to what is written, I believed, therefore I spoke. Notice not, I saw, therefore I spoke. Have you heard people say, seeing is believing? See, that's not the kingdom of God. That's people who are trapped in a sense realm. Until I see it, I won't believe it. That's where Thomas got unhooked. He wanted to feel the holes in Jesus' hand. And yet he had all the evidence of the Word of God. 
And so Jesus, when he showed his hands, and Thomas said, my Lord, my God, he says, so now you believe. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Blessed, empowered, empowered. Hallelujah. So, the spirit of faith, the attitude of faith, is I believe, therefore I speak. What is it that you believe? What do you believe? Now, if I sat you down in the context of around the Word of God and asked you what you believe, I'm sure you can recall from memory what's been taught from the pulpit. And you can answer correctly so that I would go, okay, I see you believe the Word of God. How many of you believe Jesus is Lord? How many believe He's raised from the dead? How many believe He's yes and amen? How many believe He said, if you obey my commandments, you'll prosper? I'm seeing less and less hands. How many believe that he said, bring the tithe to the storehouse, the windows will open? How many believe he said, if you sow seed, it'll multiply? How many believe he said, if you pray, you've received it? How many believe, you believe, you believe, you believe? Okay, so far you've all said yes and amen because you heard me talk about these things. But what happens when everything in your life comes unstuck and everything starts to crash around you and things begin to fall over and the finances dry up and people, relationships come against you and someone stabs you in the back and everything's coming, your body begins to hurt and there's a pain and the doctor gives something contrary to what you want to hear. What comes out your mouth at that point? It's easy in the context of faith to say, I believe, yes, amen, hallelujah, amen. What happens when finances dry up? What do you do with the next income? Do you still bring the tithe? You getting what I'm saying here? Am I still willing to praise God even when my body's racked with pain? I keep rejoicing and praising Him. Hallelujah. Amen. The spirit of faith is having believed, I speak. We also believe and therefore speak. Say this, people will know me. They will know my faith by what I say. Matthew 15, verse 1. The scribes and Pharisees, oh, yeah, these guys are again who were from Jerusalem, came to Jesus saying, Why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? They do not wash their hands when they eat bread. Verse 10, Jesus spoke some things, and then come down to verse 10. When he had called the multitude to himself, he said to them, Hear and understand, not what, not what goes into the mouth defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth, that defiles the man. What comes out the mouth? What comes out the mouth? Words. We come down to verse 15. Peter answered and said to him, explain this parable to us. So Jesus said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not yet understand that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then is eliminated. But those things which proceed out of the mouth, what is that? Words come from the heart. They defile a man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. Now, family, how many of you notice that a heart left to itself and doesn't spend time in the Word of God, these things start to happen automatically? Come on, how many of you ever been through a phase in your Christian life where you just haven't spent enough time in the Word and all of a sudden you're saying things, you think, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Where did that come from? Come on, let me see anyone willing? One person, two. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So you know what I'm talking about. So Jesus is saying, if you, don't, if, if you don't look after that, that's what's going to come out of your mouth. And that's what's going to mess your life up more than what you put into your mouth. In other words, you can eat a bunch of junk. Yes, you'll get overweight and land up with other forms, you know, health problems and that. But that's not what destroys your life. You might land up checking out sooner. But the things in the realm of the Spirit, 
things that God wants to do in your life, things that affect people around you, affect your life. That's what comes out of your heart through your mouth. That's why Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20 tells us, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Don't let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Now, family, what does it mean, don't let it depart from your eyes? It means keep the word in front of you all the time. Don't let it depart from your eyes. That means I have to look on it. Come on. We come here on a Sunday and we hear the Word of God, which is good. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. But what do I do from Sunday to Sunday? Did I get my eyes on the book? It's easy to say, well, God, praise God, you supply all my need. Did you actually look at it? Keep the eyes on the Word. That's what he says, yeah? Don't let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Why? They are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Listen to verse 23. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. The very life force, the power of your life comes out of your heart. What you speak comes out of your heart. So if I'm saying the wrong thing, my heart has been corrupted. I got the wrong seed down there. How many of you want to see your life succeed? How many of you want your life to prosper? then that has to come out your mouth, and that is your responsibility. And the only way it's going to come out of your mouth is if you get it down into your heart. You've got to protect your heart at all costs. That's why it says in verse 24, put away from you a deceitful mouth. Put perverse lips far from you. Stop saying things that are destroying your life. Stop saying things that are breaking down what God's trying to do in your life. See, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 20 tells us, A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. Everybody say fruit. From the produce of his lips he shall be filled. From the produce of his lips. How many of you could do with more financial income? Where is it going to start coming from? Your lips. It begins in your lips before it happens somewhere else. You know, I'm so broke. I can't make it. Oh, I can't get through the money. I'm always in a mess. I don't understand. God, you said you would provide. And God, you said the windows of heaven are open. God, you said I'm so blessed. Why am I in a mess? See, that's a perverse mouth. Put the perverse mouth away. Amen. Out of your mouth. From the produce of your lips, you will be filled. Why? Verse 21. Death and life are in the power of God. Oh, that's not what it says. See, a lot of people believe that. But we're going to go with the word. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. The tongue. What you say. Those who love it will eat its fruit. Everybody say fruit. See, Jesus said in Matthew 12, verse 34, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart. Something interesting about the abundance of the heart, it's not the filtered speech. You notice we always filter. We, whoever you're around, you speak in a certain way. Some people even change their accents. When they were this group, they speak a certain way. When in this group, then they change the way they speak. We, we filter. Isn't that right? Come on now. We know that we can't say this in this group. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about moments of stress. The example I always use is when you're nailing a nail into the wall and you miss the steel nail and you hit your flesh nail. <laughs> In that moment of impact, what comes out your mouth? Oh, I don't know, I don't know, I didn't mean to say that. No, that's in the abundance of the heart. You know, you, a wet sponge, you squeeze it, water comes out. Isn't that right? You soak a sponge in vinegar, you squeeze it, vinegar comes out. 
You don't squeeze a vinegar sponge and water come out. No. So if something <laughs> comes out your mouth, <laughs> it was in there. <laughs> Hello. Hello. So flush out what you didn't like by putting in the Word of God. So Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good things. An evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, brings forth evil things. Notice, the treasure's in your heart first, and then you speak it out through your mouth. Notice he said, out of your heart you bring forth. So like I said just now, how many of you want to be richer? How many want more financial increase? Start pumping it down inside of you. Take God's scriptures. He supplies my every need. Our grace abounds. I always have always sufficient in all things and every in abundance over for every good work. He increases me daily, me and my children. I'm blessed. Favor going in, favor going out. I'm surrounded by favor. Come on. Are you hearing what I'm saying? What's that? What am I doing? I'm pumping it down in my heart. And then when I speak, I will speak from a point of view of being confident in the Word. Faith is the confidence, the substance of things hoped for. So I'm hoping for a promotion, for an increase. My boss will pick it up by the spirit of faith. You, you, you don't promote people on negative and moaning and always complaining. If you just paid me more money, if you just learned I'm worth more than this company, and blah, 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 blah. no one wants to promote someone like that. Because if I promote you and you give you more authority, now you're more of a problem. <laughs> Come on now. It's the person that's full of life, full of favor, can do. I can make this. This is going to happen. This will work. I can take this company further than anybody else can. Because if God's for me, who can be against me? And just because I'm in the business, God reigns on the righteous and the unrighteous. This company's blessed just by my presence. And then you show up for work on time. You work the hours correctly. You know your product. You know what you're doing. You're good with customers. You're promoting. Watch what happens. How many are ready for kind of that kind of promotion? It says here, Romans chapter 10, verse 6, The righteousness of faith speaks. Say that, faith speaks. Do not say in your heart, will ascend into heaven. Who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ from above. See, that's looking for a sign again. Jesus, if you just show me, then I would know you're real. No, it's a perverse, wicked generation who seeks a sign. I don't need an angel to be in my room for me to believe there's a God. Faith doesn't speak that way. What does it say? Verse 8. The word is near you where? In your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. The word of faith. Everybody say word of faith. See, the word of faith which we preach is in your heart and in your mouth. So how do you get faith in your heart? Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. There's no other way. There is no other way. There's no other way. You, you don't get faith by osmosis. <laughs> you don't get it by holding another faith Christian hand. Faith doesn't come because you have a hard time. Someone says, God put me through the test just to build my faith. No, no. If, if, if hard times built faith, everybody would be faith heroes. No, faith comes by? Hearing. How many of you ate this week? So you're not hungry now. Some of you may be wanting your next meal. I understand that. But you're not like going to hospital hungry. Isn't that right? Now, could, could you think you, if you left the next month and didn't let any more food go through your mouth, do you think you would be uh, as strong in a month's time? And you notice just staring at a plate of food doesn't make you full. You can even listen to the cooking channel, <laughs> hear the cooking channel, but it doesn't fill you. You actually have to pick the food up. Your, you have to eat your food. Oh, yes. The food I eat doesn't nurture you. You have to eat your own food. Yes? yes? 
The only way faith enters your heart is when you hear the Word of God. Now, how many of you could live physically eating once a week? Would you be happy if you got one meal a week? So why do we do that to our spirit man? See, our spirit man doesn't complain as much as our physical body. You know, just within 12 hours, you're going, man, I've got to feed this thing again. And that's where a lot of people make a mistake. They understand spiritual hunger. Jesus says you can tell the signs by looking at the sky, and you know what the weather is. You know when your body needs food because you're feeling the hunger pains. But do you understand? Can you measure? Can you sense spiritual hunger can you, do you know what spiritual hunger feels like? We got, we're taking pills for depression. Meanwhile, the majority of the time is just simply a spirit saying, feed me the word of God. I need some joy. Amen. When you feel that like loss and depression and I feel like I'm going to lose everything. I feel like I'm going to lose my family. I'm going to lose my house. That fear that comes in. What is that? It's simply a spirit that's lacking spiritual food. Can you get that, that when you start to feel down and start a loss of joy and anger shows up more often and you become critical and you become sensitive to little things that happen, it's just simply your spirit saying, please feed me. And the way you combat that is every single day, the same way you feed your body, lunch, breakfast, lunch, and supper. You take the Word of God in the morning, through the day, and the last thing at night. I can guarantee you, you do that every day. You'll never be depressed another day in your life. Oh, the enemy will try and tempt you, but you'll have the power within you, the feeding of the Word of God to be able to combat and come against that thing. Welcome to Come Celebrate. Come on, let's give our Lord Jesus praise. This is the day the Lord has made, and we rejoice and we're glad in it. Alan and Janine Bagg invite you to join us for Come Celebrate 2020 from the 23rd till the 27th of March. It's amazing to see how God has grown us. And we've gone from strength to strength. And so this week really is honoring God. It is His church. It's all His doing, and He's going to continue doing it. Can we just give Him praise? He is our King. He is our Lord. If you're outside the Cape Town area, book your tickets and accommodation and make plans to be part of this faith-building conference. We're going to grow phenomenally this week. That's Come Celebrate 2020, taking place from the 23rd till the 27th of March. For any information, please contact us or visit us online at alanbagministries.org. A lot of times people can believe something in their head and agree to it, but yet not see the result that they're expecting and what they see in the Word of God. And they hear others talk about it, but haven't seen it manifest in their lives. When Jesus spoke of having great faith, he spoke of a people who understand the concept of believing and then speaking. Our lives will represent what we believe and what we speak. In this dynamic series, Alan Bay teaches about how to get your life, your words, and your actions aligned with the Word of God so that His power can come into life. No matter what waves and storms come your way, you have to make a decision to say, say, say what, you what you believe. In this series, you will discover what the true spirit of faith is. You will learn what it means to know the will of God. And you will discover how you can step into authentic faith. In this second volume, Alan Bagg takes the study of authentic faith a step further by helping you understand how to set your mind for great success. Get these two volumes together at this reduced price. Step into authentic faith and walk in the promises that God has for your life. Purchase your series from Alan Bag Ministries by contacting us at these details or by making use of our easy online shop facilities at alanbagministries.org. Knowing that faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God, it's amazing that if that is faith, we can even use that same principle to study faith. Because when you understand it and you put it into action, it's going to work in your life. And so what we've done is we've made the series available. It's two volumes. Volume one is having a look at what authentic faith is, how that faith operates, how Jesus saw it in other people and then activated it so that we would understand how it would work in our lives. And then volume two is taking those same principles as a foundation 
and using it to renew our minds. Because the Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. You and I literally are living out our lives according to the way we've been programmed in our past. Now, if we don't like the results, we can rewrite the program. How do we do that? Using authentic faith. So get a hold of both volumes today. They are together at a great investment. So make sure you get a hold of that. Of course, you can also get it on thumb drive. That way you're able to get the messages, download them very easily and get them onto your phone, into your car, wherever you are, so that you're listening to it over and over again. Make sure you get yours today. I want to pray for you now. I know that no matter what has happened, the enemy's tried to steal your faith. He hits us with problems, hits us with situations, trying to say, where is God? And now that we understand faith, we can understand God never leaves us nor forsakes us. And through that, we're able to pray and see authentic harvests. Father, I thank you for my dear friend. I call them blessed. No matter what has happened in their lives, the way the enemies tried to attack them, I cancel those foul events. I cancel those foul attempts in the name of Jesus. Every evil assignment stopped in Jesus' name. Now, devil, get out of that household and stay out. And Father, I thank you as angels surround my friend and surround that house that your blessing will flow in their lives. I speak your life into that home in the name of Jesus. Every need is supplied. I thank you that they are healed, and I thank you for your word that's alive in that home in Jesus' name. I call them blessed. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now, I know that you're going to see results happening because of that prayer. And that's what we call a testimony. Please write to us. Let us know about it. We'd love to hear from you. Other than that, that's all we have time for today. I look forward to being with you again tomorrow. This is Alan Bagg reminding you, Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. Alan Bag Ministries is making the series that featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs available to you for purchase. If you missed any of this week's programs or if this week's Wisdom for Life programs have helped you, we encourage you to purchase the series featured on this week's Wisdom for Life programs and have them available to strengthen your faith when needed.